And here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> Well, nothing funny happened to me on the way to the studio, so we may as well get started. We have some couples out there who are anxious to win a, a lot of money, as much as $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, our duck will come down and pay him an extra 100 bucks. Groucho Michael and Gretchen Wayne are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. How do you do? How do you do? Michael and Gretchen Wayne, huh? Are you brother and sister? No, no we're, married. we're married. Well, that's how it goes. You have to take the good with the bad in this world. <laughs> Mike, I'll start with you. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles. Were you born here? Yes, I was in St. Vincent's Hospital. Well, why were you born in a hospital? Why was that? Uh, were you sick? Well, my mother was there. <laughs> Now, Mike, you're a pretty husky-looking lad. You look like a football player, are you? No, I'm not. Why not? You're heavy enough to be a football player. Have you well, ever played football? I played football for a couple years in high school, but I had to give it up. Why? Well, I was allergic to grass. <laughs> <laughs> you were allergic to... Were you eating it? <laughs> how, well, much milk, how much milk did you give? Uh, <laughs> I, what's grass got to do with football? Well, you uh, play football on a grass field, uh -huh. and uh, usually you're getting pushed around in it, having your face shoved in it, things like that. Yes, well, they don't always play on a grass field. College football fields are covered with professional football players <laughs> who pretend they're not getting paid. Now, how does this grass affect you? Well, I'm allergic to it, so it makes me cough and sneeze, wheeze. Mm. All it sounds like an English law firm, cough, sneeze, and wheeze. <laughs> Now, Gretchen, you're a very cute dish. You don't mind my saying that to your no, sister? No, huh? no, no. And if every housewife looked like you, male absenteeism in industry would be around 90%. <laughs> Have you ever been a model or an actress? No, I'm a school teacher. A school teacher? Mm. If I ever had a school teacher that looked like you, I'd still be there. <laughs> are you still teaching school? Yes, I am. You are. You won't give up, huh? Now, Mike, how do you feel about your wife working? Well, I think it's a good idea for women to work, all women. Mm -hmm. Well, how long should she continue working? Say, 40 years? Well, not quite 40 years. I, 35? No, until they have a baby or something like that. <laughs> until they have a baby, preferably. <laughs> I mean, I hope she is. Well, uh, were you planning on something else? No. Uh, <laughs> If she has anything, I want it to be a baby. <laughs> well, that's certainly a conservative attitude. <laughs> well, why do you think waking is good for her? Well, I think it's a good idea because uh, after they stop, they won't mind doing housework so much. By the way, how long have you two been married? Just about two months. Oh. <laughs> well, that explains a lot of things. <laughs> What sort of work do you do, Mike? Are you still playing professional football? No, I'm an associate producer of motion pictures. Oh, well, that's very impressive. You mean you're an errand boy? <laughs> no, well, not exactly. An, an executive producer you are? And I'm an associate producer. Oh, well, how old are you? I'm 23. Oh, very good. Uh, most unusual, too. What, what studio do you work for? I work for uh, Romina Productions. It's an independent company. I never heard of them. Are you an executive there? Well, I'm, uh, I'm the president of the company, yes. Oh, yeah. President yeah. at 23, yeah? Well, that's what it amounts to, yeah. <laughs> Stevenson is 60 and still hasn't made it. <laughs> My goodness. Well, you say you're president at 23. How old are the vice presidents? Around 14? No. <laughs> They're older. Oh. I don't think I'm familiar with Romina. Is that the... Romina, Romina Productions, yes. What do you make there? TV well, commercials? <laughs> No, we make, uh, we make feature motion pictures. Mm -hmm. Our uh, last being Escort West, a picture starring Victor Mature. Well, is, uh, is Victor Mature? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, about as mature as you can get, I guess. Well, I'm amazed by all this, Mike. At 23 and president of an important film company. Do you know anything about the movie business? I mean, uh, in what way are you qualified for a job like this? <laughs> Well, I've been uh, around the motion picture business all my life. You have? Like yes. what? 
Well, like, uh, I was, I worked on a labor gang. I worked in the wardrobe department. I've been an assistant director. The women's wardrobe department? <laughs> no, the men's wardrobe oh, department. Oh, that was pretty dull, wasn't it? Well, I think of better things. Yeah. Well, would you mind thinking of some better things? <laughs> Well, you deserve a lot of credit, uh, and I, I wish I were in your shoes right now. Thank you. Well, don't thank me. The only reason I wish I was in your shoes is because mine hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gretchen, you must be pretty proud of Mike, huh? Has he really got this much talent and ability? Well, uh, I'm very proud of him. I think he's very intelligent. Please. You have every right to be proud of him. Where do you think he gets all these brains? Is his father a college professor, a scientist or something? No, his father's John Wayne. Oh. John Wayne, huh? Mike, you've seen you got a lot of talent and ability. <laughs> but I'm glad to hear your father was no handicap in your climb to success. <laughs> you know, it's always tough for a kid if the father is famous. How is it you're not a famous actor like your father? Have you tried acting? I tried it once. And you... You retired? Well, yes, I retired. Well, I had well, to give it up. Why was that? Well, I, uh, I don't know. I guess no talent. I don't know. Oh, it hasn't stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> well, have, you ever, have you ever acted in one of your father's pictures? Yes, that was a... I worked in a picture with him, and that was my last one. Uh -huh. What? what? <laughs> First and last. You couldn't even cut the mustard with your old man? Well... <laughs> what kind of a part was it? Well, I played the part of a Mongolian soldier. And, uh, <laughs> now, did you have any dialogue in this picture you yeah. were in? What'd you say, you remember? Well, This uh, must be deathless prose, can't you remember? <laughs> well, I remember the line uh, exactly, as a matter of fact. It was, Lord, the Merkits fell upon us unaware. <laughs> you say the Merkits fell on your underwear? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that doesn't sound like a John Wayne picture. <laughs> That sounds like a Marx Brothers picture. The, the Merkits <laughs> fell upon us unaware. You know, there's an old story in show business. This is a very uh, uh, well-known story about an actor who had one line like that, and this was the first play he'd ever been in. And he was uh, a footman, and he was to come in and say, my lord, the carriage awaits. And uh, he was off stage, you know, he was nervous the opening night. He's walking up and down. And he's saying this line, and he's, it occurred to him that this is a very short line that he had to say, and he thought he would embellish it. So when the uh, time came for his entrance, he walked out, and he says, My lord, the carriage awaits. He says, And I might add that any man that'll strike his mother is no gentleman. <laughs> and they threw him out, of course. And by an odd coincidence, his father was John Wayne. <laughs> Well, Mike, I'm going to give you the same advice I give all newly married couples. Keep smiling and keep up the payments on the washing machine. <laughs> now, you're very nice kids, and I have enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. And now the time has come to see who was buried in Grant's tomb. <laughs> now, you selected Mother Goose rhymes. Do you have any children? No. Well, how would you, <laughs> well, how would you know anything about these rhymes? I'm trying to go back in my past. I was a child not too long ago. Oh. What about you? I was a child once myself. <laughs> Were you a child for the FBI? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, your mother goose rhymes. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. Were you ever a child? <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> well, right now, you're in your second childhood, huh? <laughs> All right, what did Miss Muffet sit on? Her tuffet. And you have one right. She had a lot of nerve, you know, sitting on the tuffet. <laughs> she was sitting on her tuffet watching all the boys go by. Now, in the, in the rhyme, one, two, buckle my shoe, what rhymes with seven, eight? Oh, close the gate. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, seven, eight, lay them straight. Mm. That's an old polka term. I don't know how that fits in Mother Deuce. <laughs> Mother you, Goose. Uh, now have one wrong. Okay. All right. What did Simple Simon say to the pieman? Let me taste your wear. That's right. Now you have one right. Oh, good. In Sing a Song of Sixpence, uh, where was the queen? 
in the uh, the king was in the um, part of our country. The king was in the country. She was hanging up the clothes, wasn't she? <laughs> Now you have the queen one was in the parlor eating bread and honey, and along came a blackbird and snipped off her nose. That's another yeah. I was singing a song of six minutes, a pocket full of rye, four and twenty blackbirds baked in the pie. When the pie was open, the birds began to sing. Wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? The king was in the pie, and I was counting that as much. The queen was in the parlor eating bread and honey. The maid was in the garden hanging out the clothes when along came a blackbird and snipped off her nose. <laughs> Ding dong dell, pussy's in the well. Who pulled her out? Uh, little Tommy Stout. Well, little Johnny Stout, Johnny but that's Stout. close enough. You now have one he right. He was a fat kid anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> the 10 o'clock scholar of a dollar a dollar comes to school at a different time at the end of the rhyme. What time does he come now? A dollar a dollar at 10 o'clock scholar. He, he probably comes at nine. No, you're... What, you're a dollar, dollar, ten o'clock scholar. Yeah. On time. No. Uh, eight. No. Nine? <laughs> Try twelve. No, he comes at noon. Uh, now, how do they stand now, Joe? Well, they're, they're back out. to one wrong. No, no, oh. you're, you, you have to get two wrong in a row to be oh. out. So what we're, ja we're trying hard. <laughs> what did Jack be nimble jump over? A candlestick. That's right. Now you have one right. Where is the little boy blue? Out with the cows or something. Little boy blue. Blow your horn. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The cows in the meadow, the uh, sheep. sheep's with the corn. <laughs> sheep. He's not with the cows and he's not with the sheep. He's a pretty lonesome kid. <laughs> well, he's under the haystack, Jack fast asleep. Oh, now what do they got? Well, they got one wrong now. <laughs> According to Mother Goose, what are little girls made of? Sugar and spice and everything nice. That's right. And we have one right now. Now, who put pussy, who put pussy in the well? Um, I don't know that one. Little Tommy Green. Oh, you don't one. ask him, huh? Well, he told me he didn't know. Yeah. You have one wrong now. Oh. Needles and pins, needles and pins. You give me the next line. Needles and pins, needles and pins. I've never heard of these rhymes Oh, before. when a man marries, his trouble, trouble begins. begins. Well, and now they have two wrongs. Yours are over now. Yes, we have. <laughs> well, you'll have to go back to playing the Mongolian, I think. You're not going to get any money. <laughs> I'm sorry you missed two in a row, so you're through. We don't want you to go away broke. I'm going to ask you one question for $100. Now, get it right. No help, please. What animal lives in a pigsty? <laughs> Yeah, let me have this one, uh, a pig. <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't win more, but thanks anyway for being on the show and good luck in your married life. Thank you. Thank you for And in your movie. <laughs> uh, Groucho, Napua Wood and George W. Davis are standing Poor by. Napua Wood? Napua Wood. Well, and here they are, so, uh, be Groucho Mark, folks. Welcome to the world's most meshuggin' show. Uh, <laughs> say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you, I assume, you always have with you. George W. Davis and Napua W. Wood, is that right? Mm-hmm, yes. <laughs> now, what kind of a name is Napua? A Hawaiian name. I'm all right, how are you? <laughs> but what kind... <laughs> This duck will be at the National City Bank in the morning. <laughs> You've just won yourself $50, Mr. Davis, and $50 for you. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, beat it. Now, I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> now, let's see. Your name is George uh, Napua Davis, huh? No, George W. Davis. W. Davis. Uh, what does the W stand for, George? W stands for Washington. Oh. Well, that's very, that's very distinguished. <laughs> Why do you have that name? Well, uh, I happen to have been born on February 22nd, and uh, on that cold... Well, isn't that Lincoln's birthday? Uh, no, sir, that's George Washington's birthday. And oh. on that cold morning when the doctor came down to warm his hands at the country store, he said, there's a new George Washington in town. How'd you know it was a cold morning if you were just born? That's, uh, that's what they told me. Who told you this? My mother. Was she there at the time? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know you're lucky at that, George. You might have been born on February 4th. Today you'd be called Groundhog Davis. February <laughs> the second, you mean? Second, is it? Yeah. Well, I'm not as familiar with the hogs as I used to be. You know, there's something vaguely familiar about you, Mr. Davis. I've seen you before. Are you the fellow who leaves the skim milk at my house every morning and, and charges me for cream? No, I happen to be the mayor of Beverly Hills. Oh, really? Well, say. Oh, yeah. Well, Maya Davis, huh? Is that your name? Uh, keep, keep. I, th I thought you had a dance band. <laughs> well, where are you from originally, Maya? Are you a Beverly Hills native? Well, uh, I was uh, originally born in Nebraska, then raised on the farm in Kansas. Now, why did you leave the farm? Didn't you like the bucolic life? Oh, yes, I loved it, but, you know, I wanted to make a little more money. Oh, so, so I started teaching school. You made more money teaching school? Oh, yes. Made twice as much. You must be a financial genius. <laughs> what kind of work are you doing now, uh, Maya? Well, uh, I happen to be a banker. A banker? Yes. Well, what bank are you uh, uh, complicated well, I'm, with? Uh, I mean, associated with? I'm president of the Perpetual Savings and Loan Association oh. in Beverly Hills. Perpetual Savings and Loan? I know them That's very right. well. They went out of business recently. Oh, they? no. <laughs> No, not that one. You're thinking of some other one. This is oh. a very solid institution. Oh. Has been in Beverly Hills uh, strongly for 25 years. Is that so? Yes. Well, I, I was only fooling. I go there all the time, Maya. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's where I get my slugs for the telephone. <laughs> now, do you plan on making politics your career? No. No, I think that uh, in Beverly Hills, we don't call it politics. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just simply doing a service for the community. Yeah. Well, this is a family show. We don't want to know what you call it uh, <laughs> when you're in the privacy of your office. Meyer, I'm just kidding you. I'm quite familiar with your record as May Maya. Maya. <laughs> what is it, Meyer or Maya? Mayor. Maya. Of course, the old gray Mary ain't what it used to be. No. The old gray Meyer ain't what it used to be. <laughs> now, Napu, well, let's get back to you. Uh, what do you do for a living? Are you in politics? No, I do a little dancing, but teaching oh. most of the time. Oh. I teach down at the Ferry Studio in Hollywood and out in Palos Verdes at the Polynesia and Club Hawaiian in Long Beach. What, what do you teach? The hula. The Hawaiian hula. hula. Uh -huh. Now, could you show us some of the hula? I'd love to. I mean, without the joint being raided? Glad to. They Would play some Hawaiian music. You need Hawaiian music? A little bit. Uh -huh. Jack, do you know Ista Snicht on Schnitzelbaum? <laughs> Nine. No, we only want it once. Oh, now, grass a, shack. What kind little, of Hawaiian? What do you want? Grass shack. She wants a little grass jack. <laughs> you want you want to step out here? All right. Out here, yeah? Huh? Huh? You better take your shoes off. It's all off. Oh. Are those are your feet? What do you do there? All right. I'll tell them about the little grass shack and the waving coconut palm. Neat under the grass shack. I mean, above the grass shack. I'm just a little Hawaiian and a homesick island girl. I want to go back to my fish and poi. I want to go back to my little grass shack in Kialikikua, Hawaii. Where the humu humu nuku nuku apua go swimming by. And where the humu humu nuku nuku apua go swimming by. Come on, man. That name is you, John. I'm going to teach you how to do, do the man's hood now. Now, we put our arms over to the right. Look. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then put our feet apart a little. Uh-huh. And bend down at the knees. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, lesson number one is to move that right hip to the right. One. See? Then to the left. It's a fine man, huh? Then to the left. Then to the right. Then to the left. Then to the right. And left. 
Now that's listen. He hasn't got much you've got there. Uh-huh. Cut out. What did you have in the tank? Now let's tell the two to put the left foot out forward. Easy. Uh-huh. Now you keep fishing right on. Now bend down at the knees here. Now we call this one mixing the point. Mixing the point. All right, here we go. Follow me. Put the arm up here across the chest here and the right hand on the hip. That's it. Now here we go. Follow me. One, two. <laughs> you learn here tonight. Oh. Next time the bank examiner comes, you'll be able to wiggle out of anything. <laughs> I, uh, if I get sued by my customers, will you take care of me here? I certainly will. I'll send you to another bank. <laughs> this will be late at night, of course. All right, let's play your bet your life. Um, you selected plants, animals, and birds. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. What animal pretends to be dead when it's cornered? Possum? You have one right now. Uh... What do you call a flower that blooms each year without replanting? Hmm. I just... Give up? Give up. Oh, you know this. Perennial. Oh, yeah. Now you have one wrong. Don't get the next one wrong and the game is over for you. To what order of mammals do my squirrels and guinea pigs belong? You got a whole cellar full of them. <laughs> Anybody Insects. want any? Insects. Yeah. Mammals. Mice, squirrels, and guinea pigs. Rodents. Rodents, R-O-D-E-N-T-S. Well, you that's pretty easy. Missed two in a row. I'm sorry, you missed two in a row, so we're all through. However, we don't want you to go away broke. <laughs> I'm going to ask you one more question for hundred dollars. You have a hundred already, huh? The Fourth of July holiday always falls on what date? Fourth of July. New Year's Eve. That's right. <laughs> Sorry you didn't win more, but thanks anyway. Thank it was a lot of fun, you. and I, the pool was wonderful. <laughs> I enjoyed every hour.
And here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> Well, nothing funny happened to me on the way to the studio, so we may as well get started. We have some couples out there who are anxious to win a, a lot of money, as much as $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, our duck will come down and pay him an extra 100 bucks. Groucho Michael and Gretchen Wayne are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. How do you do? How do you How do, you do? do? Michael and Gretchen Wayne, huh? Are you brother and sister? No, no we're, married. we're married. Well, that's how it goes. You have to take the good with the bad in this world. <laughs> Mike, I'll start with you. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles. Were you born here? Yes, I was in St. Vincent's Hospital. Well, why were you born in a hospital? Why was that? Uh, were you sick? Well, my mother was there. <laughs> Now, Mike, you're a pretty husky-looking lad. You look like a football player, are you? No, I'm not. Why not? You're heavy enough to be a football player. Have well, you ever played football? I played football for a couple years in high school, but I had to give it up. Why? Well, I was allergic to grass. <laughs> <laughs> you were allergic to... Were you eating it? <laughs> how, well, much milk, how much milk did you give? Uh, <laughs> I, what's grass got to do with football? Well, you uh, play football on a grass field, uh -huh. and uh, usually you're getting pushed around in it, having your face shoved in it, things like that. Yes, well, they don't always play on a grass field. College football fields are covered with professional football players <laughs> who pretend they're not getting paid. <laughs> now, how does this grass affect you? Well, I'm allergic to it, so it makes me cough and sneeze.